Uh, hello and welcome to today's webinar on getting the most out of your NEHGS membership. My name is Ginevra Morse. I'm the Director of Education and Online Programs at the New England Historic Genealogical Society. I'll be moderating today's event. NEHGS is a nonprofit organization supported by our members and donors. We provide resources and expertise in nearly all aspects of family history and are pleased to offer this webinar today for our members and friends around the world. Giving today's presentation is Sarah Liebenrud, Senior Manager of Member Services. Sarah was first introduced to genealogy in 2010 when she interned for our publications and technical services teams. Sarah started as a member services representative in 2012 and became manager of member services in August 2015. She oversees a team of five who handle membership operations, support, and stewardship, as well as a visitor services desk at the entrance to our library. Sarah has early Cape Cod ancestors from Eastham, as well as New York, Midwest, English, and Dutch ancestors. So whether you're new to the NEHGS family, have been a member for years, or are considering joining, this webinar will discuss the many benefits and services available to members and help you make the most out of your membership. Sarah will discuss the different types of membership, access to resources at AmericanAncestors.org, and at our eight-story research facility in Boston. She'll also highlight our original scholarship and ways in which our experts can assist you in your research, plus other lesser-known benefits. At any time during the presentation, please feel, to, uh, feel free to write a question in the panel to the right of your screen. Sarah will answer as many as she can in the time provided. There is no handout for today's presentation, but we will point to a number of resources available on our website, such as subject guides for visiting our library and for using our website, AmericanAncestors.org. I will include direct links to those resources in my follow-up email to you tomorrow. Also, if you click on the icon of a camera in the upper right hand of your screen, you can take screen captures from today's presentation. And finally, we are recording this event and starting tomorrow, you can easily go back and review any of the content from the presentation. All right, so with, with that, I will turn things over to Sarah. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. I'm glad to be here with you all and talking about membership. One of the best parts of my job is getting to talk to people near and far and hearing about what discoveries are being made, what genealogical challenges you face, and what excites you about uncovering the past. As we all know, family history is a very personal journey. And discovering one's ancestors is a very rewarding experience, especially when we can share these discoveries with family and friends. This is likely a familiar site for all of you, our website, AmericanAncestors.org. So what's the difference between NEHGS and American Ancestors? NEHGS was founded in 1845, and over 170 years later, we are the leading comprehensive resource for family history in America. Our mission is to advance the study of family history in America and beyond by educating, inspiring, and connecting people through our scholarship, collections, and expertise. You'll see the American Ancestors name on our website and in our quarterly publication, American Ancestors Magazine. This is the brand that represents our areas of expertise and the scope of the resources we provide to family historians. We provide expertise and research in nearly all aspects of family history, from 17th century colonial New England through 20th century immigration research. So why do people join? After getting website access, many people join saying, family history is important to me and belonging to NEHGS is an important part of my identity. Others value visiting the library getting help putting together their genealogy, becoming a better family historian through our educational programs, and other reasons are supporting our nonprofit mission, getting help from expert staff, and to work on writing a book. 
As you can see, the website is perhaps the most well-known member benefit, but there are many other benefits to membership, whether you are here in Boston, across the country, or abroad. The NEHGS family is made up of over 200,000 people from across the globe, all of whom are part of one of three categories. Guests have access to only 5% of our online resources on AmericanAncestors.org. If you are a guest, there is no discount on our services and there is a $20 admission fee to visit the library each day. Research and contributing members have full access to all resources and are actively engaged in family history research. Today, I'll be focusing on the member benefits for research and contributing members. As many of you are already research or contributing members, you've probably seen a diagram or list of member benefits before. These include discounts on our books and services, entry to our library and archives, access to our manuscript collection and online databases, and more. You can see here that our contributing member levels include friend, associate, supporter, benefactor, and patron. Today, I hope to shed new light on some familiar benefits and introduce other lesser known benefits of being part of the NHGS family. Let's start by diving into some of the lesser known resources available to members on the website. People call our membership office with questions on all kinds of topics, but one of our most common is to help callers log in or reset their passwords. So before you conduct a search or even start navigating the different sections of our website, please log in. This will grant you proper access to our databases, archived webinars, commonly used templates, book discounts, and more. The login button is at the top right of every page. Um, if you forget your password or get an error stating login failed, click on forgot password and you will be sent an email so you can reset it. Just enter your email address and password here and you're good to go. Often people have their password saved on their computer and if you change your password, this will also need to be reset. Once you've entered your email and password, you'll know that you are successful if it says welcome at the top of the page, followed by your first name. Right up here. If you haven't logged in, you might see an error message like this one when trying to access records online. Okay, enough on logging in. Let's talk more about the 1 billion searchable records. This was a major milestone we reached earlier this year and we're continuing to add more every week. In fact, in the last three months, we added over 169 million records. All of these records are categorized by a person's name, location, date, or a variety of different record types, such as birth, marriage, death, baptism, adoption, a land deed, record, military records, naturalization, taxes, and many, many more. So of course we have databases for New England, but did you know that we also have databases for more than 20 other countries, including England, Canada, Italy, Denmark, Australia, and even Guatemala? Of more than 460 databases, nearly half are unique to AmericanAncestors.org, and as members of NEHGS, only you can access these records. Now I thought about listing all of them on this slide, but the font would have been so minuscule I opted for these highlights. The American Genealogist, Cemetery Transcriptions from our Archives, uh, Plymouth County Probate Records, and some of the other ones. You can peruse a list of all of our databases when you click on Browse, then Databases. 
on this page you will see all the databases listed alphabetically. So why would you want to browse all the databases? Sometimes if you know the type of record you need or want to better understand what information is contained in a particular database, this feature can be helpful. This is a very long page, so I'm going to scroll down and show you the filter options and explain what all these blue icons mean next to each database. So as you can see, the filter options on the left have a variety of categories within location, date range, or type of database. For example, if you're specifically looking for a census record, military record, or record from Sweden, you can filter on these options here. Once you've found one or more databases you're interested in, you can click on the name of the database, or the I icon here, to see information about that database. Clicking on the magnifying glass will take you to our advanced search page with that database pre-selected. The camera icon indicates that database has images to view, whereas databases that have the paper icon indicate only transcriptions are available. If a database you're browsing has images, clicking on the camera icon will take you to the first page of the first volume of that database. You'll then be able to page through this resource as if you were reading a book. Returning to the browse page, if you want to save a database as a favorite that you expect to go back to frequently, click on the star icon to do so here. Your favorite databases can then be easily searched on our advanced search page. Next time you are here on the advanced search page, select favorites to only search your favorite databases. This will save you time and help you narrow your search results. Here I've done a search for a last name Liebenrude, location Ohio. Everything else is blank. Now when I click search, we'll see that there are 958 results for this search. That number is right up here. It's best to start your searches broadly and then if you get a lot of results, go back and refine the search a bit more to narrow the results. As I mentioned earlier, we're adding records to the website every week, so this might be a search I'd want to do again in the future. If you want to make sure that I see any new records for Liebenrudes in Ohio, I'll click on the bright blue Save Search button at the top right of the page. This will allow you to name the search and save it to your profile so you can easily return to this search again. To see all your saved searches, we'll click on My Account at the top of the page. This is the My Account page. I'll point out a couple of things here. First is the Saved Search button, where you can select the searches you just saved and run them again. Next to that is the Digital Purchases button, where you can access any stored materials for an online course or an ebook that you purchased through us. You can also see on the left your membership level, member ID, and renewal date. In the gray box below that, you'll see what address we have on file for you and a link to change your password. Another great resource members can utilize online from home are the 19th century U.S. newspaper database and the Marquis Biographies database. By going to search external collections, you can access these two resources, which take you off AmericanAncestors.org to search. Remember, you must be logged in to see these resources. If you're not logged in, this, play, this page will display a message asking you to log in. The 19th Century U.S. Newspapers database has approximately 1.7 million pages of primary source newspaper content from throughout the 1800s. 
It features full text and images from hundreds of papers from every region in the United States, and it contains a wealth of genealogical content, including birth, death, and marriage notices. The Marquis Biographies Online features comprehensive profiles on over 1.5 million of the most accomplished individuals from all fields of endeavor, including government, business, science and technology, the arts, entertainment, and sports. Now, many of you may already be experienced at using the website, but for anyone who wants to learn more about searching our databases, we have a subject guide shown here called UsingAmericanAncestors.org, as well as several webinars from beginner to advanced on search techniques. This subject guide contains a lot of information, some topics which I've covered today, others are using the sound decks or wild cards while searching, uh, printing and saving records, and citation information, to name a few. Our eight-story research center in Boston houses an incredible collection of manuscripts and published genealogies. If you haven't visited yet, I hope to see you here in person sometime. Even if you aren't local, there are still aspects of our library collections which you can access from home. Our member services team offers brief welcome tours to any member who is here for their first time. Or if it's just been a long time, or you're bringing a friend, just give us a call and schedule a tour for an overview of the building and collections. Our education team also coordinates group visits if you want to bring your local genealogy group. What you're seeing here is our visit page, which you can get to via the link at the upper right corner of the screen on AmericanAncestors.org. This is where you can find out about parking, accessibility, hours, holiday closures, directions, and more. If you plan to visit over a holiday weekend, do check ahead of time to make sure that we are open. As you scroll down the visit page, there are links to both an archived webinar on preparing for your visit and a subject guide titled Library Guide and Collections Overview. This library guide has extensive details about the collections and resources here at the library, as well as great tips on how to prepare for your visit. So what should you bring? You're welcome to bring your research materials and notes, whether that is printed or on a laptop. You can take pictures, take notes, and even are welcome to use your own portable scanner. We have lockers where you can store your belongings as well as a break room where you can take a break and enjoy a snack. There are also computers on all of our research floors which you can use, so it's helpful to bring a flash drive to save all the records you find. So why would you want to visit our library? Well, our collection includes 30,000 published genealogies, over 28 million manuscript items, and much more. Access, sorry, access to rare books and manuscripts is a benefit of membership. These items can be searched in our library catalog, which I'll get into shortly, and need to be requested from our archive staff on the fifth floor. Our collection covers the entire world, but with special emphasis on the United States, especially New England, the Mid-Atlantic and the Midwest, Canada's eastern provinces, and all of Europe. Access to our millions of manuscript items and rare books are a benefit of membership. Since our founding over 170 years ago, we have been collecting these unique resources, including Bible records, journals, diaries, compiled genealogies, unpublished town records, even paintings, samplers, and photographs. These are incredible resources for family historians. The only mention of someone's birth, death, or marriage may be found in an unpublished source like this. We also have what are called vertical files here at the library. 
These are collections of largely unpublished research materials on particular families by people who donated their research to NEHGS. You can view the manuscripts or vertical files at the library by request or you can search for them online in our new digital collection site where we are slowly digitizing these resources to make them more widely available. This is our library catalog at library.nehgs.org. You can search our collections using the online library catalog whether you are here at the library or at home. The library catalog can help you organize your research and help you make a checklist of resources you'd like to review during your visit. For example, here I've done a subject search for the Knowles family. This first result is a manuscript of the Knowles family. That sounds great, so I'm going to check the box and then select Add to Email Print Queue, which is located right here. Then if you click View Queue towards the top, you'll be able to see my list of resources. I can then email it to myself or my research buddies. I can print a copy or save the list to my computer. The digital collection site can be accessed from AmericanAncestors.org by going to search and then digital collections. As you can imagine, with millions of individual and extremely fragile items, the process of digitizing will be going on for the foreseeable future. But you can explore what we have done so far right here on digitalcollections.americanancestors.org. You can also find the digital collections of the Jewish Heritage Center here. The Jewish Heritage Center is a resource for exploring and preserving the histories of Jewish families and institutions in New England and beyond. The cornerstone of the Jewish Heritage Center are the digital and paper collections of the American Jewish Historical Society New England Archives, which members of NEHGS have access to. We have manuscript items, photographs, newspapers, and more that document Jewish families and institutions in the greater Boston area and throughout much of New England. Members also have access to many other genealogical services while visiting our library in Boston. Shown here are just a few of these other resources for family history research. A major part of being part of the NEHGS family is having access to the nation's leading genealogical scholarship, both online and in print. This is what sets us apart in the genealogical community. Most of you are already familiar with our quarterly publications, American Ancestors Magazine and The Register. The magazine has been printed since the year 2000 and The Register since 1847. Both are mailed four times a year. However, what you may not know is that members have access to back issues which are fully searchable online and the most recent issues can be viewed, viewed as digital publications. In the publications section online, you'll see options for downloading a PDF or reading online. Just go to Browse Publications and select the register or the magazine. This page shows the most recent issue of the register. I'll click on the first Read, read Volume 170, Summer 2016 to read it online. Reading Online opens this flipbook style web page for reading the register or magazine. Shown here is the register. Some people choose to read it this way instead of receiving it by mail. Now I know that many of our members love to use their iPads, so I'm happy to share that this digital version of our publications also works on iPad and on your iPhone. 
And this is what reading the American Ancestors magazine looks like. You can easily flip pages, zoom in, download, or print from this feature. In addition to publishing new research in our publications, we are also sharing with the genealogical community via our weekly e-newsletter and daily blog. Members of all levels can subscribe to the Weekly Genealogist to receive news and updates every Wednesday. Shown here is the gold sign up button located at the bottom of every page on our website. You can also subscribe to our daily blog, Vita Brevis, where staff share updates and insights on their research and genealogical discoveries. Every week, the Weekly Genealogist shares what new databases have been added to the website, any upcoming programs or discounts going on, and spotlights resources for genealogists. Of course, there's also our ever-popular weekly survey. And Vita Brevis is designed to offer the reader short essays by the Society's expert staff on their own research and news of the greater genealogical community. These short posts on research methods and research results are applicable to a variety of genealogical subjects and interests. So how many of you have early New England ancestry? The Great Migration Study Project and Early Families of New England Study Project both provide biographical and genealogical sketches for all immigrants to the New World between 1620 and 1700. The Western Massachusetts families in 1790 and early Vermont settlers to 1784 study projects document the lives of early pioneers in this country as they migrated westward or northward at the turn of the 17th century. These study projects are important efforts in scholarship conducted by NEHGS, and you can only search these sketches on our website. So as you can see, our genealogists not only write for our publications and assist visitors to the library, they're also actively contributing to the field of genealogy in many ways. And our genealogists are here to help you become better family historians. We have staff experts in New England, New York, Midwest and Western, Southern, Caribbean, Canadian, the British Isles, and European research. We also have experts in lineage and genealogical writing, genealogical software as well. Our staff give presentations at national conferences and contribute to research and presentation in various television shows. And our very own chief genealogist, David Allen Lambert, is a regular contributor every week to the Extreme Genes podcast. In fact, did you know that the NEHGS library is the anchor location for the popular PBS show, Finding Your Roots, hosted by NEHGS trustee, Henry Louis Gates, Jr.? Our experts can provide great advice and guidance with your research. There are three main methods of getting help from our experts. Submitting a question to our Ask a Genealogist service, scheduling a consultation, or hiring our research services team. Ask a Genealogist is a free service that is only open to NEHGS research and contributing members where you can receive reference assistance via email. Questions might be about where to find a particular record or piece of information or to ask for tips on what to try next in your research. Our expert genealogists take turns answering these questions and while they can't do research for you, they will be able to provide suggestions and on where to look and for answers. 
selected questions and responses are shared with the general public. So in a way, you can think of this as a genealogical advice column. In addition to posting the questions and answers on our website, we also feature those questions and answers that we believe may be of interest to a larger audience. You may see these submissions included in our e-newsletter, The Weekly Genealogist, and in our quarterly member magazine, American Ancestors. Just a reminder that these questions and responses may be made public and will be found in a variety of locations. If you prefer not to have your question published online or in the magazine, just let us know. Any HGS research and contributing members receive a discount on consultations. Consultations may be scheduled anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. You will be paired with a genealogist from our library staff who knows the area or topic you are researching. Even if you can't get to Boston, consultations offer a great way to make progress in your research and get advice from an authoritative source. In fact, we just gave our first online consultation to someone in Norway. We also have a brand new service, Genealogist for a Day, where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one help from an expert for the entire day. So just a quick overview of our research services program before I explain what the various services are. Both members and guests can con contract research from us. There may be different rates depending on the service, but research and contributing members always receive a discount. To start a research case, you should have a specific topic in mind that you want explored by our staff. After the research is complete, we send the client a detailed report of our findings. We state where we looked, what we were looking for, and what was found. We cite all of our sources and attach copies of relevant documents. You end up with a concise conclusion and suggestions for next steps, estimating the time it will take to research each suggestion. So what exactly are these services in research services? It's really an umbrella term, so that includes a number of ways we can assist you. If you've hit a brick wall or have come to a seemingly unsolvable problem, we can help. We can obtain probate records for you. We can help you apply and obtain dual citizenship to countries such as Ireland and Italy. If you think you're eligible for admission to a lineage society, such as the Mayflower Society, the DAR, Colonial Dames, or any other society, we can do the research for you and complete the application process on your behalf. We're happy to help organize your papers and put all your information into an easy to read format as well. Or if you want to complete a family history publication or better understand the life of your forebears, we can write the biographical narratives about your ancestors. We can also research and create beautiful custom charts. A fan chart like this one shows the ancestry of one person and their direct ancestors. On this chart, the client wanted to see each person's name, birthplace, and birth, de birth date, death place, and death date. We also added a little narrative on his surname, Cavanaugh, in the upper left corner, as well as his mother's surname, Quinn, in the upper right corner. Other than the member discount on research services, there is another special member benefit, which is that members receive 25 free pages photocopied each year. Sometimes all you need is a single page or a section from a book in our library, and in those cases, if you're not local, our photocopy service could be a big help. As you've seen, there are many resources for members online and at our research library in Boston. One way that we bring these resources together is through education programs. Our educational offerings include the online learning center, online programs, which are 
multi-day sessions where an NEHGS expert leads you through researching a specific topic, as well as tours, programs, and events like lectures here at the library. Members have exclusive access to our online courses taught by our experts throughout the year. Members also have exclusive access to week-long research programs at the library or around the country for more in-depth study. If you haven't attended one of our Come Home to New England or Research Getaways yet, it's worth considering. This is our online learning center. You can join thousands of participants each year and watch recordings of previously broadcast webinars, download commonly used templates like research logs and family group sheets, and read inform informative subject guides. Topics include Irish research, New York resources, writing and publishing your family history, and many more. If you're logged in, you can watch archived webinars here on topics like researching Native American ancestors or African American resources, using early New England probate records and early military sources. One of our most popular webinars was choosing a genealogical software program, and you can access that here. Subject guides provide how-to tips and methods, a listing of essential resources in print and online, as well as contextual background on a particular topic. So as you can see here, some of the topics include French-Canadian genealogy, German genealogy, New York research, even Japanese-American genealogy or Quaker genealogy. We have another subject guide on World War veteran research. And of course, there's many more. Even though most genealogical software programs will export your findings into, for, into such formats, research templates will help you organize your research, save you time, and present your information in a consistent and accurate way. And you can download those here. As I mentioned before, our education team leads tours to repositories around the country and abroad. During each program, our genealogists give lectures and provide hands-on guidance for making headway in your research. As members, you receive a $150 discount on all of our major programs. You can learn more about upcoming tours at AmericanAncestors.org slash education. Now I'll get into some final member benefits. Members save on all titles published by NEHGS in our bookstore, as well as our online courses. Our best-selling publications authored by NEHGS staff, like the Genealogist Handbook for Irish Research and the Great Migration Directory, are accompanied by decorative charts, portable quick reference guides, and children's gifts. As I mentioned earlier, NEHGS is a nonprofit organization, but what you may not know is that member dues cover less than a third of our operating expenses. Some people choose to philanthropically support the work that we are doing by becoming a contributing level member. As you can imagine, we're very grateful for all the many ways that people support us. One way that we express this gratitude is through additional benefits for contributing members. Contributing memberships range from the friend level at $150 per year to patron, which is $1,500 per year, and each level has a corresponding tax-deductible amount. Contributing members receive priority registration to our events and other perks shown here. I'll just highlight one, which is the complimentary consultation time, which each contributing member receives. Friend level members receive 15 minutes free each year, and the amount increases as you go up to life member, where it's three and a half hours. This free consultation time does expire, so if you are a contributing member, remember to schedule your consultation within three years of accruing it. 
Becoming a life member or life benefactor is a special way to show your lifelong commitment to family history. Life members are no longer responsible for annual dues, but receive all the benefits of library and website access, our publications, and discounts on services for life. Life members receive a sterling silver life member lapel pin, a personalized life member certificate, as well as the expert assistance I mentioned before, and my personal favorite, a one-year family-level gift membership to give to a family of your choice. One final benefit I want to mention is our fantastic member services team who are here at the library to help you. We work regular business hours, 9 to 5, Monday through Saturday, and if you have questions about our website, member benefits, or any kind of genealogical question, just give us a call. Or you can email anytime membership at nehgs.org. If you have specific questions about searching the databases on our website, you can also contact our web team at webmaster at nehgs.org. So whichever level is right for you, the best part of being a member is that you have gained a family and community here at NEHGS. We're excited to share with you our resources, expertise, and enthusiasm for family history, and we look forward to assisting you along your path of genealogical discovery. All right. Well, thank you, Sarah, for your presentation. Um, so now let's tackle your questions. If you have anything that you'd like to ask, go ahead and type it in that questions panel to the right of your screen, and we'll try to answer as many as we can in the time provided. Um, so, Sarah, one question for you. Um, Mandy asks uh, if you could just kind of clarify the, the difference between an individual and a family uh, research membership, and what is the difference in cost between individual and family? Sure, well I'm happy to clarify that. The individual membership is, of course, for one person. It costs $89.95 a year and gives you all the access that I mentioned in the webinar. Uh, the family level membership is $119.95 a year, and that gives access for three people in the same household to our resources. So with a family membership, you receive a member card for each person, um, but they do share the same login to our website, and there's one set of publications that is mailed to the residents. Um, I'll just add to that that the friend level and above also include member benefits for three individuals in the same household. Great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, Patricia just asks, um, so for contributing level members, you know, they receive a certain number of um, minutes or hours of complimentary consultation time. Is that accumulative? Yes. Well, the whichever level you're at in the contributing category, uh, you accrue so many minutes each year. So for example, if someone is a friend level member, uh, they pay $150 a year and uh, $30 of that is tax deductible and then they would receive 15 minutes of complimentary consultation time. So if they don't use it that first year, that's okay. The next year if you renew at the friend level, you'll get another 15 minutes and then and so on. So since it does expire after three years, um, basically if you didn't use your consultation time, um, you could schedule a 45 minute consultation and use three years worth at once. Thank you for clarifying. Um, now, of course, we also offer an institutional membership, so uh, there may be um, people listening who have uh, public libraries 
or historical societies near to them with an institutional membership. Can you kind of briefly talk about what the difference is between um, what they could access through their library's institutional membership versus an individual um, research membership? Sure, so institutions can become a member of the society here and what that gives uh, them access to is our website but only in the library building itself. So if your local library has a membership with us that would mean that you can go there and access resources on AmericanAncestors.org and there are some exceptions. The external databases that I mentioned, the Marquis biographies and the 19th century newspapers, those databases do not apply to institutional memberships. Um, so libraries can sign up for this type of membership and give access to their communities that way. Um, but you wouldn't be able to utilize any of our discounts um, or expert assistance options via your public library. That would come with a research or contributing membership. Thanks. Um, now, if someone has lost their uh, membership card, um, Joanne's asking that she says that I lost my membership card. How can I get a replacement one? Um, or how can you just know uh, what your member number is? Sure. Well, that's a great question. So if you have lost your member card, uh, just contact our membership team. Um, that can be via email, which is membership at nehgs.org, or by phone, 888-296-3447. Uh, and we, you can just request a replacement and we'll send you one. Um, if you're looking for your member number, you can find that by logging into the website and clicking on my account, which will be right at the top of the page where it says, Welcome, Joanne. And you can click my account and it will list your member number. And what is, uh, David's asking what the process is for requesting photocopies. So you mentioned that members um, have a certain number of kind of free photocopies that can be used in our books or manuscripts. Um, so how, do, how does one go about just kind of requesting those photocopies? Yes, so that is handled by our research services team. So you can either email or call research services um, to let them know what specifically you're looking for. Um, you know, with the photocopy service, they are really looking for you to know exactly what you want. Um, so you can just contact them via their email address, research at nhgs.org, or just call our main line and anyone can transfer you to the research department and you can tell them, you know, this book, this article in the book, um, or whichever documents it is that you're interested in. And uh, they keep track of how many pages you've used so far, how many you have left. So um, you can utilize that, that free 25 pages. Thanks. Um, now, Jane and a few others are asking about um, if we have any kind of reciprocal membership privileges with other organizations. Um, I was wondering, you know, and a few people have also asked about visiting the library, um, you know, where to stay, where to park. Um, and I thought that you might want to mention our, our relationship with the Charles Mark Hotel. Um, so I'll, I'll let you kind of mention that. 
Right, so we have a um, relationship with the Charles Mark Hotel. It's uh, just about a block from the library here in Boston. And so if you are visiting, um, you know, want to make a trip to Boston to come do some research, you can stay at the Charles Mark Hotel for a discount. Um, there's other hotels also listed on our website in the visit section, um, but the Charles Mark is the only one where being a member of NEHGS gives you a discount. So that's a relationship we have here and that's a helpful tool. Um, and Mary actually is suggesting that we form a relationship with um, Hati Trust, which we actually have a relationship with in that um, our library catalog is actually um, a portal to digitized um, books as well that are out of copyright. So if they've been digitized and put on either Hathi Trust or Google Books, um, you can, or if there are eBooks that you can um, that you can borrow, you can actually get to those in uh, or through our library, our online library catalog. I would recommend looking at that subject guide that Sarah mentioned on using the NEHGS library. It talks a lot about what other benefits you can you can get out of using our online library catalog, um, and I'll send a link to that um, in my follow-up email to you as well. But that's um, there are a lot of hidden benefits to membership, but um, I think we've covered most of them in this webinar. Um, let's see. One other question. Um, Dwayne, uh, so Dwayne is, was a guest member and then he wanted to, uh, or he became a member, but there was some issue with his email. Um, so, you know, saying that I tried to upgrade, but I already had a guest member, so I couldn't use the same email. Is that an issue? And if someone is a, currently a guest and they want to become a member, um, is there, are there any additional steps that they might have to, to do? Yes, so I can definitely talk about this. So when we send, um, you know, emails out <clears throat> to our guests, uh, inviting them to join, um, sometimes people encounter a challenge with joining, and I think it's because of the order that people are, the steps that they're taking. So if you have a guest account and you decide to join, you just have to be sure to log in first to your guest account and then join. Because if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you try to join not having logged in, it will say an account already exists with this email address and it won't let you join. So we want you to uh, feel welcome to join, and the way to do that is to log in first to your guest account. Um, and so that being said, once you're logged in to your guest account and join, your email address will remain your username. It'll just turn into a member account. So you don't have to create a new email address or have a second email address. In fact, if you do have two email addresses on our website, that ultimately can confuse things um, even worse because then you'll receive emails that are intended for guests and emails that are intended for members and that gets very confusing so we recommend sticking with just one email and if that changes you can just contact us and say I'd like my membership to be on this new email address and we can take care of that for you rather than creating a second account. And we've had a few people actually ask about donating materials. Um, certainly our manuscripts collection is um, one of, if not the largest collection of unique family history items in the U.S. Um, so that's something that really kind of uh, sets us apart from other organizations and other family history libraries. Um, but if, if you are interested in donating materials, um, how do you how do you go about that, Sarah? 
Sure. So, like Jennifer mentioned, we have a really unique collection here, and um, part of that is because our archivists and the staff who work in our manuscripts collection um, really know the collection thoroughly and um, know what will add to the collection and be um, expanding what we have to offer here. So if you have something that you think would be a good donation, um, definitely contact us before uh, dropping something off. Our archive staff um, like to have a heads up and they like to speak with people about um, what it is that you're interested in, in donating. So you can just contact our membership office and we're happy to put you in touch with someone from Manuscripts. And I should mention, since um, Susan's asking about any upcoming webinars, um, our December webinar, so we offer, um, I think as we've mentioned, of course, we have um, one, at least one free webinar each month open to both members and guests and the genealogical community. Next month, we are talking about organizing your family papers, and um, one of our presenters will be Judy Lucy, our archivist. So um, she is definitely one of the people to talk to about donating materials, um, but she'll be talking about kind of how to at least start organizing your papers and your research files. So um, unfortunately, we're going to have to end it there. Uh, I know that there are a number of questions that we didn't get to, but if you'd like more hands-on help with your research, you may want to consider scheduling a consultation with one of our experts or hiring our research services team. Of course, if you have further questions about membership or um, our collections or our procedures, go ahead and also email uh, membership at nehgs.org. Um, and if you're interested in learning any about any more about these services, um, I will be including uh, links and the emails uh, in my follow-up email to you tomorrow. So uh, thank you again for joining us today. As you leave the event, you'll have the opportunity to fill out a survey and give us your feedback. As we continue to expand our webinars and online offerings, any and all feedback is extremely helpful and appreciated. If you'd like to access more how-to resources or learn about upcoming online educational programs, please visit our online learning center, AmericanAncestors.org education. I hope to see you at our online programs in the future. Goodbye for now.